right there. Good for now. Start that. Oh, start that. Oh, that's all your stuff. Sorry. Is this? What? Oh. Oh. What, what, what? When this is on or off, is it red or switch the volume? Uh, red is it's already recording. So. so the horse is just hanging out. Sorry. I'd like to call a meeting to order at 3 o'clock. First thing on order today is uh, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, which is standing right there. Now, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do uh, any of you people on up here have a, a conflict of interest with anything that's going on here today? Keely? Anybody have a conflict of interest? First thing we want to do is approve the minutes from the last meeting. Hello. Is there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, we'll uh, accept the motion. I'll move to accept. Accept them. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, I'm going to let uh, Steve take care of number three, number three one. It sounds good. Um, one of the things that the committees do with the um, once the elections are taking place with the different committees, we typically have an election of a, a chairperson and vice chair. So that's why that item's on there. And so um, item 3.1 would be the election of a chairperson for the Board of Appeals. I would like to make a motion for Kevin Sampson to be the new chairperson. I'll second. So there's a motion and a second for that. Is there any other nominees? All right, and so with a vote for that, um, the election is for a chairperson to be Kevin Sampson, and I guess we would take a vote for that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, so as, uh, and then the next item, 3.2, is the election of a vice chair to the Board of Appeals. Introduce that new girl. And um, she's not here. No, and there's no one on the phone, correct? Okay. Um, and then the th item 3.2 is the election of the vice chair to the Board of Appeals. So if anyone would want to make a motion to that. No one wants to be vice chair. <laughs> well, we could always vote Don to be vice chair. Don could be vice chair. Who's the uh, vice chair? Any seconds? Oh, we have two, two, we have two, two people talking at the same time. Who, who, who are we going? Uh, well, so there is, uh, okay, so there was a motion for Don Gerber to be vice chair. And was there a second to that? I'll second uh, Keeley's uh, motion well, you're to be the vice chair. So you can't second your first. Okay. Is there a second to Don's motion for Keeley to be vice chair? Second. Is that right? you, Richard? Yep, yep. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. So at, with that, Don, we appreciate all the time that you've given us the last couple of years. But Kevin, at this point in time, we'd ask that you uh, take over the chairperson role. And uh, if you guys wanted to switch right seats. Here, yep. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. And I can help you out with this. So we're at 3.3. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Next item up is 3. Point, uh, I'm sorry, 3.3, variance application by Michael Wade requesting to concrete his gravel driveway. Currently has 11 feet from house to side. 
uh, lot line at 724 Grand Avenue. Uh, Mr. Wade, are you here? Uh, okay, if you'd like to go ahead and step up to the podium. Is there anybody here for this particular item? Any neighbors? Okay, so we have a couple folks. Okay, so Mr. Wade, go ahead and uh, let us know what you're looking at doing. Um, I have a gravel driveway, as you can see in the pictures, and I would like to pave that. Um, we're in the process of building a new garage. Um, I can't meet city ordinance because I only have about 11 feet from foundation to property line. So I'm asking for a variance for three inches from my property line uh, and a nine foot driveway. What? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to go from front all the way to about where the garage sits now. Slightly forward, yeah. Yeah. And is it going to be concrete or blacktop? Uh, concrete. I'm sorry, Don, did you have, did you have another question? Um, two of my questions are <laughs> Okay, okay. I think there is a, another I think, gentleman. I think, I think we have a couple folks here that, yeah. that may have some questions here. So, sir, if you want to, if you want to go ahead and step up to the podium, yeah. let us know your name. Good afternoon, my name is Mark Schinebeck, and I am the property owner of the lot, empty lot adjacent to 724 Grand Avenue. Um, I'm not sure how much time I have to speak. As long as you need. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's already been a motion to approve it. Uh, however, I would hope that you'd wait until uh, you consider what I have to say. Okay. Uh, Okay, I would first like to point out that I have been talking on two occasions to uh, Jeff Litsky, the uh, code administrator for the North Side of Sheboygan. Okay, um, I would like to point out that there are two code compliant locations on the lot at 724 Grand Avenue to access the proposed new garage. Okay, one of those locations is east of the house on Grand Avenue, and it's where they have approximately 27 feet of road frontage to put in the new driveway that would go to the garage in the backyard. The second code appliant approach to the yard would be through the Ace Street Alley. Now, when I talked to uh, Mr. Litsky on Monday about this, he was unaware that the alley was a public alley. He told me the alley was abandoned. I informed them that it, indeed it is a public alley. And if you look at the uh, survey that uh, Mr. Wade presented, uh, you can see it says right on the survey, the certified survey, that it says 16 foot wide public alley. So that indeed is a uh, code compliant entranceway to Mr. Wade's property. So Mr. Way's property has two code compliant entrances where he can meet the, the city codes to build the new driveway. Okay. And uh, to make it an official part of today's public record, I'd like to present to the committee chair, uh, I have a, the same survey that Mr. Wade has, so I enlarged it a little bit and I placed both driveway locations, which I've just suggested, along with Mr. Wade's future garage. I'd like to present them to the chairperson at this sure. time. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Would you be able to put the survey on the screen, please? I'd appreciate that. So we have this, okay. Yes. How do you know if it's on? Yes, it's on. It's red. Yep. Yep. So a couple of things I had just mentioned there is um, there is the opportunity, obviously, the um, code compliant, I guess, uh, driveway that he speaks of with regards to the alley is an unimproved alley. It's there technically on paper, but at this point in time, it is uh, unimproved, meaning that it's all grass. So just so everyone's aware of that. I beg your pardon? The, 
alley that is there technically on paper is not physically built in terms of an alley. It's a grass alley. So it's there technically on paper, but it is not an improved alley. That's correct. It's an unapproved alley. That's correct, which we have spoken about when we talked about you wanting to build a house there. Okay. Now, uh, I've been... Uh I've owned this lot, my empty lot, for some time, and I've been I'm developing ideas to put a future home on that lot. And uh, at one point, I was considering using the alley entrance to access my garage. And I uh, asked the city zoning official at the time, and he said that it would be allowed that I could use that alley to access my garage. I, says, what however, I, what it, I mentioned was that you would be able to speak to the city engineer and the public works department to see what standard you would have to put that alley into in order to utilize that for as an alley to access your property. Are you are you Mr. Lutsky? I'm Mr. Steve Sokolowski. Oh, okay. Um, yes, and um, I was told after I inquired further that I, I indeed can use the public alley to enter my garage, but I'd have to improve the public alley with the, the city requirements, like eight inches of gravel and another eight inches of concrete on top of that. Oh, yeah. and, and so, it, the, you know, if I, as a property owner developing my lot, has the right to use that alley, Mr. Wade certainly would have the right to use that alley as well. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It, uh, the, the alley is, is a, unimproved public alley, but there's nothing preventing it from being improved. That's the point I'm trying to present yep, to the you board. Made it. Yep, we understand that. Okay. Now, the uh, second uh, public access to Mr. Wade's property is on Grand Avenue. There, right, right there, that's a good picture of it. The, the Grand, that's the A Street entrance for the alley. This is the uh, entrance off of Grand Avenue. Uh, where that big tree is there, that's uh, Grand Avenue is right behind that big tree. Okay, so you got 27 feet right where the little arrow is there circling around, that's 27 feet. And so by code, you know, that, that is a code compliant entrance to that alley. I mean, not the alley, I mean to the, his side yard. And uh, so that would be the second location on that for that lot where they would have a code compliant but I guess my access question to the alley. would be is there's not an access from that road for him to enter there. There's, he would have to change the curb and gutter um, on that property to do that. That's extended cost plus removing of the tree. And then you're encroaching very closely to the property right next door as well. So there's, you know, there is already an existing driveway entrance where he's asking to put where there is really already a driveway there and to improve the property to the neighborhood as well. So I guess I have a question about why, um, why you, I guess what your grievance is as to why you wouldn't sure. want us to do it sure, or accept it. Okay. Well, Wisconsin statutes say that, uh, you have to, the city, the property owners, they have to abide by the laws mm -hmm. of the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And if you review your own variance request form that you have to, that Mr. Wade had to fill out to, mm -hmm. to apply for this variance, uh, there's three steps that Mr. Wade has to take mm -hmm. before his uh, request for a variance can be approved. Mm -hmm. Okay, step, step, uh, the first step. Please let me refer to my, to the, the form. Sure, no worries. You know, he's supposed to be able to uh, be a, Mr. Wade has to pass three tests according to your variance request mm -hmm. before uh, something can be granted. Correct. And uh, if Mr. Wade can't meet the three tests according to Wisconsin statutes, the variance has, it's not warranted. Okay. Okay. You're familiar with this? Yes, I'm very. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you are. <laughs> okay. So I want to point that out to the panel that, uh, you know, approving this variance without it meeting test one, two, and three is against Wisconsin statutes, and it's against the city code of zoning ordinance. Okay. Okay. Can I ask what these three tests are? 
they're part of the application. Um, and if you want the basically the three are why what hardship is created by the application of the zoning ordinance to the property is reasonable use of the property denied by the zoning regulations is there a unique physical characteristic of the property which prevents development of the property and would granting the variance harm the public interest in any way so mr. Wade is supposed to explain to the board how his situation meets test one test two and test three mm -hmm. and he did in his application well as i read his application and i and i have it i picked it up from the sure. office on monday uh, i do not see in there where he explains satisfactorily how he uh, fails how he cannot why he cannot build the new driveway on the west, on the east side of his lot. Okay. I, you know, we'll why? have him. He can some, answer, or his uh, contractor. Why? Well, his his contractor, or he can answer that question. Okay. So as you see, in other you can come yeah, up Dave, to the podium. The, uh, other side Mark, if you could let them come to the public lectern, Dave, you need to come up and speak into the lectern so everyone can hear you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we we can yeah we can go back and forth if we have to yeah. Again I'm, again, I'm Dave Nenning, American Garage Builders. Most of you know me. Uh, to contest this gentleman over here on the other, it says the other side of the property has a house structure and a tree in the way. See picture. So that's the other that he's contesting why I can't go on that other side. And as this, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, ma'am? Keeley Johnson. As Keeley Johnson has notated uh, by the pictures that, and there's the tree and the others, the east side of his house, which would cost more uh, in construction costs versus just trying to do the variance to go by the existing driveway already. Um, Mr. Wade's in compliant with everything here. And Mr. Wade has told me this gentleman uh, calls him, argues on the phone with him, comes on his property unattended. I've gotten pictures that you've been there doing things on his property. So, you know, he's had this empty lot for X amount of years. Does he plan on ever doing anything there? You saw the pictures of the unmaintained alleyway there that's strictly grass. Um, you know, then you, if, I, if I put in a driveway on the east side of the building where the tree is, that's a cost. Laying that concrete is an extra cost. And then having to fill in the existing driveway with dirt, grass, whatever, landscaping, that's just more costs. So I ask that you accept this variance and uh, we just move along with life. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you have any other? Sure. Okay. Um, sir, uh, was that your response to how you proved test one? Please address the committee and not each other. Oh, if you have questions, oh, okay. I'm, please address them okay. to the committee. So I'm, I'm asking if, if that's uh, Mr. Wade's representatives, is that his response to, to prove that to, as their proof for test one? Right, and he said yes. Okay. Um, he, he mentioned that he's talking about cost, that it might cost more to build the driveway. They have to take a tree down, have to move a garden. According to Wisconsin statutes, any extra costs incurred to bring your lot up to code compliance, it's inconsequential. Those costs, extra time, are not supposed to be a consideration by the board when they review the facts. Okay, irregardless that the, there was an existing driveway there, there's an 80 plus year old driveway at the site right now, well, that I'd like to point out that driveway is a non-compliant driveway. It's well, it could have been compliant in 1890, but yes, as of it, today's code. Okay, it, it, so it's an obsolete driveway with an obsolete garage that Mr. Wade would like to tear down. I'd like to point out that this obsolete garage is actually about two and a half feet into the alley, so it's not code compliant. So we're eliminating one of the non-compliant issues. Yes. So, I'm, that's I'm, I'm so that's a good to, thing. I'm trying to point out that 
the property you know, is so old that many of the things there are obsolete and no longer apply to the current codes, you know, such as the garage and the driveway. Right. So Mr. Wade wants to do, redo the garage. So by code, he has to put in a new gravel, a, a new concrete driveway. And by code, he doesn't have enough room for that driveway. He's only got about 11 feet, eight inches, I believe it's short on the picture. Right, and we're familiar and, with that, and that's why he's here today. Yeah, and you need, you need uh, by minimum by code, you need a 10 foot wide driveway and a three foot setback from the neighboring property. Right. Okay, so that location does not meet current codes. And according, according to your variance, the, the guidelines for your variance, which are spelled out in the code section 15, that, that area of the current driveway does not qualify for a new driveway. And if any other options exist, according to the city codes, if any other options exist, those options are, take precedence over a non-compliant option, which is what Mr. Wade's uh, contractor is suggesting. He's suggesting a non-compliant option. So since there's two, two different locations on the property for the new driveway that would be code compliant, I am uh, suggesting that Mr. Wade's contractor follow the city codes and bring the property up to be code compliant. Okay, that is, that is a point that I'd like to make. If I, if I, if I may ask, is what is the objection to taking his existing, what he's using as the existing driveway, what is the objection to having that actually improved? The, my main objection is that it's not following the uh, city codes. The new okay. driveway, if, if, a, if, if you would approve that non-compliant driveway, you know, for permission to put the, this concrete down, You'd be approving. You'd be going against the state codes, and as long as there, are, I can see that that would be a, a, a solution if Mr. Wade didn't have any other access to his yard for a driveway, but he does, and Wisconsin law states that well, if the property not, had, technically he doesn't, um, because you're dealing with him to put in a driveway on the other side. Mm -hmm. He does not have access or curb and gutter open for him to be able to access his driveway. So that would then be a cost that would be incurred by the city to be able to acquire him to have access to his property off of that road. There's already existing access on the existing so-called driveway that he is using right now. So the other side, if he chose to put the property or the, or the driveway on the opposite side of his house, he has no access to that driveway without curb and gutter. I, I understand and that. And that's a cost that the city, which then you as the taxpayer would, acqu uh, would acquire at that time. So that is something we also have to take into account as well, that if there is something that needs to be modified or changed in that way, so much so that it's actually a cost for our taxpayers, we have to be cautious of that as well. So, and then him having uh, an access of a alley that is full of grass and it is not cut and not trimmed oh. is also a hard um, thing to, to really say that he has access because he, he wouldn't. Okay. It's uh, not oh. like he would be able to get to his property once he put that driveway in. He wouldn't. Okay. I, I, uh, I appreciate that viewpoint. Uh, but I'm wondering at this point after your comment, if the city is, is, uh, cares about enforcing the zoning ordinances. Well, we do to I a mean, certain point, sure. To a certain point. Well, we I mean, do to a certain on point. On Grand Avenue, there is no official curb there. That's uh, from years ago. It's just sort of a, like a little little lump. that. You, but it gives him access to his property. Yeah, I mean, you could take a car there right now and just drive right on the lawn. It would be no problem. It's, it's, it's almost like an apron. The whole, the whole frontage of, of his lot is like an apron onto Grand Avenue. The whole Grand Avenue yeah. block there is like that. But so, I, I mean, live around the corner from you, so I know exactly where the property is, and I know exactly what the what the roads look like there. Yes, yeah. I do. Okay. But you know, it it's something that we have to look at the same type of thing too. Where if he wants to drive and park his car on the front of his lawn, he's not allowed to do that. That's right, because the code yes. says he has to exactly. drive, build it on a driveway. Exactly. And, and so, what, but what I'm getting at is he has 
plenty of room on that road frontage there to build a code compliant driveway. Okay, so, I mm -hmm. mean. I guess my question. What, on my particular lot, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, continue. Uh, okay, on my particular lot on A Street, I have a, a large tree in the front yard, and that's going to be in the way when I build my home. Sure. I called the Department of Public Works and asked, uh, can I have permission to cut the tree down? And they says, yes, you can cut the tree down if you're going to put your driveway in. But you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. right? I have to pay for it. Sure. So your comment is saying that Mr. Wade has to pay to cut that tree down. I mean, that's not the, at the city's do on a city's dollar. You're not no, I understand. The tree is in the, in, in the public right away. Mm -hmm. But it's a property owner like myself. I have to pay to cut my tree down to put my Correct. driveway in. So Mr. Wade would have to pay to put sure. cut the tree down to put his driveway in. Sure. Right. And I'm not saying that he doesn't have to do that. That's not what I'm saying. There, there. I guess my question would be more to Mr. Wade: what your what your intention is, or what it what the new garage will look like, what the new plan for the driveway is, um, just to get more of a picture. Sometimes, if you show us a picture, that's a little bit more helpful to get everyone to understand exactly what you're looking to do. Um, so, if we have some of those pictures, would be a little bit more helpful. Yeah, I guess I guess from Some that perspective, material. what are you what are you talking about doing? I mean, there's a footprint on here, but what are we talking about in terms of the garage? I guess is the question. If you would mind, Mr. Wade, coming up to the lectern to speak or his contractor. Um, the garage that nah, the garage is waiting for your decision today to sure. see where we can actually put it. So I don't have any pictures of that. Okay. Um, it's going to be a four car garage. I believe around 960 square feet or 980. It's compliant with the. Uh, What's um, the current size of the garage? Um, I do. Isn't not it a know three that. and a half? I think. Something yeah. Like that. Um, there's a picture of it um, that you can go up there. It's real close to the same thing. It's just um, the newer garages I think aren't going to be as wide. Sure. You know they're going to be shaped a little bit differently. Yeah, it's close. So the garage is going to be probably close to 10 feet forward from the picture and probably three to five feet off to the right. And it's just going to be two big doors yeah. and so then the door up to the other to side there. That's what I'm wondering. Sure. Five feet? Sure. Okay. That's, so that's what. Just, so um, I guess, is there a possibility to move your garage over just a little bit, to move that driveway over just a scoot so it will fall in compliance? Right. One of the things, one of the things that could be considered as we're looking at this is, say, for example, he gets it to the house, and if they're veering it over at the house, there could be a certain area to veer it on over to get the three feet between the neighbor's yard who's speaking and the garage to turn it on over. So that definitely is an option that the board can yeah. consider. I, I didn't understand all of that. I didn't want to stop you. Yeah. Um, so this was the certified and Dave, you're going to have to speak in the okay. microphone. I just wanted to you, you have to speak into the microphone, Dave. When you're talking, we'll look. Yep. We can, we can put that survey up on the um, TV if you want to explain that. We just have to have people speaking into the mic. Yeah, yeah I, I, I got you, Steve. Yeah. Um, so as you see, it's five feet already uh, from the survey done from DNH Land Surveyors, which is certified by the red stamp here. Um, I'm five feet off of the marker from what Dennis found on the north side of where the unimproved public alley was. We were going to be five and a half feet from the northwest corner, five feet where you go up to the southwest corner on the garage portion okay. of it. Mm -hmm. And the question about veering it lies where the corner of the back of the house is, where you see the 11.7. Yep. That's the tight space where we're really only impeding on anything right there. Otherwise, I'm code compliant all the way around, and I've built plenty of places in this city where I'm code compliant, and I don't have issues with this city because I follow their rules. When my customers want to have a hardship 
I suggest them to come here so they can comply with the city. So again, I ask so, you. So the question that's being asked is, you're mentioning that you're five feet, but there's no reason why the garage couldn't be pushed over if that sure, was an I issue. Sure, I can a certainly bit to do that. East I'm, I'm in already order showing to get I'm past compliant. that corner and have three feet along the common property line. Right. There's a, that. The only area where it necessarily would need to be closer is the section between up to the house, right where the and then a certain the portion is. past the house, there's no reason why it, it could seems fear to bend in there, and right? keep the three feet over there. Yeah. So I don't know how, what the neighbor feels about that, but that's certainly an option that the um, board can take I would into consideration. I be as far away from this gentleman as possible, right? Because my, my customer doesn't deserve this, really. So, and he's clearly got an empty lot that he's had for how long? So I don't know what you want to do right by the house there. That seems to be the only problem in question as being code compliant. So I'll do whatever you guys want to suggest to me. You know, yeah. that's why I'm here for another answer. Yeah. So again, I ask that you We just try this. to make everyone happy if we yes. can. Yes, we try. And you've seen me before, and we all want to try to make everybody happy. Yeah, I don't know. And I certainly appreciate that. Thanks, Dave. I don't know if you'd have any comments one way or the other with regards to that, sir, if uh, what your thought process would be, um, because obviously he's looking at the, the zero areas or the three inches in the area between the houses, and then once they got it passed, they could veer it over, which is more adjacent to your property, which would be code compliant, which you keep you know, stressing. So I don't know if that makes things any uh, more acceptable to you or not. Okay, I appreciate the fact of you exploring the possibility of, of a, a secondary solution. Um, um, I, we just had the survey up on the uh, on the TV. Uh, I, I would. Uh, I'm wondering. I submitted the, my two proposals for a code compliant driveway. Uh, is it possible to have them up on the screen? Uh, no, it is not. We don't have, that was all documentation that was brought to us ahead of time, and that's the only way we can get it in. Okay. So the two code compliant items that, uh, I'm sorry, what was your last name again? Shinnebeck. Shinnebeck. It, Mr. Shinnebeck is speaking about is the uh, alley, which we've talked a, a number of times, that's coming this way, mm -hmm. and then the other which is coming this way off of Grand. So those are the two that he's showing right? that are different. So basically, if you looked at that, if you're looking at the survey right now, this is the one that Mr. Shenebeck is talking about on the unimproved alley, which doesn't make sense. And then the um, one off of Grand, which would have more of a legitimate opportunity at this point in time from the standpoint of you're coming from uh, an improved street. So those are the two options he's speaking of, which he has spoken of for the you know his other previous comments. Okay. What does the um, city suggest? I, you know, I, I mean, there's, in, in you know, from our perspective, we're looking at an existing driveway that's gravel that he can use right now. So from our perspective, even if we denied it as a board, he would still have the opportunity to use the gravel as is. Um, I'm thinking offhand, and the board can do what they wish, but at a minimum, we could have that area a little past the house um, in terms of going close to the property line, and then, if anything, veering it on over to the east so that there is that three-foot paving setback um, that Mr. Shinnebeck is talking to that is the code compliant in that zone. So does Mr. Shinnebeck own lot 10 and 11 or just lot 10? Uh, I don't know, are you, it's, do it's you know if it's 10? It, just just lot, lot 10. And half of and half lot 11. 11, okay. Okay, so, so half of 11. So if, I mean, it, it, we would have to probably give about, I would imagine 10 feet past the house in order to start getting a radius of some, a legitimate radius. I, I have a survey map. I've that. blown Oops. up Mr. Wade's survey. I read, I, I maybe spoke too soon. Are you? No, 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 no. Nope. Feel okay. free. I, I have a copy. I submitted those two other survey maps that I enlarged from Mr. Wade's survey. Yes. Where I have the two proposals. I also have, I used the same enlargement 
it will show the impact area of which I'm referring That's to. That's right. I mean, it's kind of hard to see on that, on that photograph there. Gotcha. Can I approach the... Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I wish we could put these up for everyone to see. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's... Uh, you know, you, you, the you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to speak into the oh, yeah. lectern. Uh, uh, no, no. Right. But I have a, 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 a diagram off of Mr. Wade's original survey that shows the impact. You have to speak into the public yeah, lectern. Being recorded, yeah. Oh, so we got the it. microphone. Oh, yeah, because we're being recorded. Uh, Sorry about that. Okay, I, I have a, a blown up survey, enlargement of the survey that Mr. Wade has up on the screen there. And uh, it shows the uh, area on the lot that impacts my lot if you're gonna concrete that driveway. Now Mr. Wade wants to put his concrete three inches from my lot line. That's correct. Okay, the state and that's code. Why, and that's why he's here today. Yes, right. and state code requires three feet. City code is three feet. Or city code, okay. Now, so we're okay, so I, I would like inches. to present this to the board so the board can see this. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the public won't be able to see it, but uh, you know, the board is the one that's making the decision. Uh, and, and it'll show you, I've also included on this diagram the plot plan for my future development. Okay, I'm, I live in New Holstein right now. I'm retired. I, I've been holding on to the city lot for the last 12 years because I want to build my retirement Eighth home Street. on that lot. I am currently right drawing here. up plans this, this, this to right. do so. If you want to bring this that up. And, half of this, and this is A Street. I don't know if you want to ask if any of the board members have think, any questions. Yeah, I think if anybody else has any questions, thank you very much. We'll hang on to this for the time being as we kind of go over this. And pass that around with them. Does anybody else have any questions up on the, on the board here? Don, Don, can you hit your button, I please? I own, uh, I'd have to review. 10 and half of 11. Don, 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 can you, Don, Don. Tap, tap him on the shoulder. Don. Thank you. What's the business since 1972 and that property that you're talking about there has been like that ever since then. And Keeley, how long have you been in the business? Almost 20 yeah. years. Almost 20 years, okay. This is what he owns right here. So right, but this is an abandoned alley here. That's what we're really talking about. You're talking okay. about an abandoned alley. Yeah. No, sir, the abandoned alley adjoins my, my property. The, the abandoned alley is, is to the north of my property. My property is I, I'm a little to confused. What is this? Sir, you have to speak into the microphone. If you look at the survey map that's on, right, 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 if you refer to that, you can see lot 10, and I own the first, the north half of lot 11. Uh, the gentleman there that's <coughs> saying he was in real estate business, if he, he should have enough experience to read a map, if you look to the north of lot 10, that's the unapproved public alley. Now, I'm not sure what, what uh, point he's trying to make that he's, that I've owned okay. a lot for 12 All right, years. Sir. Okay, thank you. Your, your objection has certainly been noted, and we do appreciate your your input. But I think I think we should probably be best served moving moving forward here because we have a whole okay. room full of other uh, folks. I appreciate. Thank you for the your time. opportunity to speak here today. But I do have one last thing to talk about. If you review the application for a variance, this panel is supposed to be asking Mr. Wade. How he passes test number one. And that's what his application, and that's what, you, that's and that's what, what the application has done. Right, correct. You're supposed to ask him how he can prove test number two. You haven't asked him that. You haven't given me an opportunity to say how it would harm my, my interest in that property. And you haven't given Mr. Wade an opportunity to say how his project won't harm the public interest. So, right. I mean, you're trying to take this process and shorten it, and that's not fair. Thank you, sir. I, I, I deserve time to speak and time to express my interest, especially when it comes to no harm to the public interest. Thank you very much.
I think it's, I think we're going to go ahead and take a vote. I mean, unless there's something else that we have to adjust. Well, if Mr. We, if Mr. Wade would like to speak again, sure. he can, he can respond to, to what he's saying. Excuse him. If he would like to answer his question. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, I already heard that the alley really is not an option. I just want, I just want to point out that there's a tree block in the other entrance. So the only way to go through the alley is way on the other side of the block. Then I want to add that um, if you look at the survey, um, I must have misunderstood you in the beginning. I don't expect to go all the way back three inches from my property line. That was never the idea. It was only from about where my foundation of my house ends. Um, that, that, I mean, that's all I want. Yeah. And it was going to go and be compliant with the, the city and everything else. Yeah. Sure. So, just wanted sure. to make sure. Yep, and then um, I just want to say thanks for your time. Okay, thank you. So, so right now we do have a motion to approve on, on the floor, and we do need a second. But uh, I, I would object to tell you your And and that is that is noted. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sir, if you would sure. like to speak, you have one more opportunity to get done what you want, and then the question has been posed, and then we're going to close it to public testimony, and the a board is going to act. So you have the opportunity. One of the things that the uh, board is supposed to consider when a, before approving a variance is test number three, harm to the public. Now, as I previously expressed, I'm trying to develop this lot for my retirement home. Now, when I was a kid, I used to play with dominoes. You know, you set them up on a table and then you draw on a line, you press one and all the dominoes start tumbling. Okay, any decision that's made in a city on a, these small lots, one decision has a domino effect where it pushes back on everything else. Also, in the in a urban setting, you got like trees that grow over the lot line, and then it's and then they start interfering with the neighbor's property. You know, they start hitting the roof or the gutter or a wire, so the neighbor has the opportunity to cut that tree the tree branch off the lot line you know, to regain his airspace for his own protection. Okay, now I give you those couple of analogies here because I'm gonna, to, to help make my point. Okay, granting the non-conforming driveway would deny me the full use of my lot. I could face a legal challenge in the future if I decide to put up a fence on the lot line. A driveway on the lot line would, without the protection of the three foot setback, would force the airspace over my lot to be used for the vehicle's mirrors. Now the prior owner of 724 Grand Avenue had a large pickup truck with these big mirrors to pull his recreational vehicle. He also had a large box truck that he used to haul construction materials around to fix his house. Now, by forcing that concrete right up to my property line, you're forcing the traffic through that driveway to use the airspace over my property or those mirrors. Now you might say, well, what difference does that make? Well, I'm interested in putting, in developing a lot lot. I'm interested in putting a fence on the lot line. I could face a legal challenge because I put a fence on the lot line and the neighbors Cement is right on the lot line. My fence would be in the way of his mirrors. So then I would be forced to set my fence line back into my property so he could, he could pass through with the mirrors. This, I, I plan on building a 10 by 20 uh, yard shed in the backyard, which is five feet from both, uh, from the corners. And that's an impact area. If you look at the, at the survey map that I handed in there, 
It's in the impact area of uh, his driveways in the impact area. So I build that shed there. If I have to move my fence back from the lot line, then my fence is going to be too close to my yard shed. And I'm going to use, lose the use of that, the use and enjoyment of that part of my lot. I'm going to lose that. And you're going to say, well, so what? Right? Just move your shed back closer to A Street. Well, I can't move my shed back closer to A Street because there's a city code that says it has to be 10 feet away from my house. So you see how the dominoes are starting to fall? And then you're going to say, well, why don't you move your house closer to A Street? Well, then I'm going to lose the use and value of I need a certain amount of room to put my driveway. So what, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is if you allow this drive this new concrete driveway to be three inches from the lot line, it's going to have a domino effect going across the entire lot, my entire lot. And that's an unfair burden for me to have to bear. In short, every inch of my lot is vital to my success in my attempt to develop it as a single family retirement home. This variance request restricts my choices of what I can do for my lot's development. It would create an unfair burden to bear, especially when there are two code compliant choices available for 724 Grand Avenue. Now, Thank it you. was earlier mentioned that, that the alley, it's, it's in grass or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what, what's, what state it's in. It's always cut. But I mean, it, you know, it, it, it's a fact of the matter is it's a public alley and the public can use it and the public can have it developed at their expense to make it into a driveway to access the garage. And it's called, it would be code compliant. Anything else? Okay, yes. Because we need to start finishing up. Okay, you're, you're, brief. Rehashing, brief. you're rehashing a lot of points you've made. So if you could be brief, we'd appreciate it. Okay. I'm opposed to any remedy that allows less than a three foot setback, setback by cord from the edge of the concrete to my lot line. My lot is only 60 feet wide. Even one car length impacts nearly one third of my rear lot line, as I was referring to with the shed and the fence. An undersized driveway, Mr. Wade's undersized driveway, would be sandwiched between Mr. Wade's home and the potential fence on the lot line. And this would inevitably cause problems. Snow removal could, be, could damage the fence. Vehicles, mirrors could be impacted by the home or the fence. You know, the mirrors are gonna be running into the home, they're running into the fence. In my eye, a code compliant driveway would eliminate all those potential problems that a new non-conforming driveway would create. The fact that 724 Grand Avenue currently has an 80 year old driveway is not a suitable burden of proof for granting such a variance request. Such a request would be solely for the owner's convenience. And as spelled out in the variance procedure application, such, you know, uh, such a request would be solely for the owner's convenience and therefore does not meet the guidelines for variance approval. So by approving that, you'd be going against your own guidelines. The fact that Mr. Wade would probably need to relocate his garden and remove a tree is of no consequence according to the law, according to the codes. Any additional expense or time spent by Mr. Wade to achieve a code compliance situation, solution, are required by the very variance procedures. Right here, the variance appeal procedures, they're required by that this very form. Right, you've mentioned that. Okay. Okay, and finally, my main opposition to this variance is that Wisconsin state law dictates that if a code compliance solution can be found, it must be given precedence over any non-conforming request. Mr. Wade's request is non-conforming. My proposals fit the codes for his new driveway and garage. All he has to do is move his garage over to the East side of the lot. Sir, is there anything new you'd like to add? 
because everything that you're speaking about, we've heard okay. a couple of times. Okay, I have one last paragraph. If it's new, fine. But if it's rehashing, then we're going to uh, take, start taking questions from the board and taking action. Okay, sir. I respect your opinion. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Say one thing real quick. Yes. Hang on. No, nope, Don. No, nope, Don. Hang on a second. Just real quick. I just, I just want to address the board one more time uh, as this gentleman over here thinks that we're going to be right on the line in question of the back of the house there with the 11-7. Mr. Wade is suggesting 9-5. So here's his rebuttal. We don't want to be on your property again, but it is a huge cost to move that. You don't know how much of a cost that is. Mr. Wade is already spending okay. a lot of money to improve his property over there. You don't build nothing Dave, on your please property. please speak to the board. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank, thank you very much right now. So we do have a motion to approve on the table. Do we have a second? Second. Second and, from Dick? Yeah. Any discussion? Could I make one comment? Yes. I have one comment. Don, could you press your um, button, please? Three of us are familiar with this eminent domain. This has been longer than 25 years that he's probably been mowing grass on your property. I'm not sure that you have a legal to claim about what you bought. All right, it's not for us to get into the legal aspect, totally so let's stay with the, the item. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I, think, I think one of the things that the board may want to consider um, that presently isn't part of the motion is whether or not we wanted to say, for example, have a three foot setback, say uh, 10 feet, you know, north of the edge of the home so that it starts to uh, have a radius. Um, and then eventually you have the three, you know, as much as possible of a three feet along that common property line over there. It's something to think of to, to, and we probably need some type of distance dimension. I don't know what works best, but I was just saying 10 feet because that probably starts to get around, I would imagine, the house. So that might be something the board would want to think about if they're considering approving as a condition of approval and obviously the the question and we deal with it from a building inspection perspective is just making sure all the drainage is maintained onto this site. Did you want to did you want to address that? Is that something that can be done? Yeah, I can as part of the do anything you ask me. <clears throat> right? The thought of going on the other side of the house though is that Yeah, right. So so Don with that in mind, would you do we need to have him amend his his motion just to include that language there yeah that would be a good idea i'm already okay. showing five I'm, I'm, I'm already showing from that point of the corner of the house from hearing away from his property you can see that the dotted line going over to that five feet yes We have board, we have uh, discussion amongst right. ourselves at this point in time. So there's a question, there's an approval, there's a condition that's being talked about. Someone needs to take that into account and decide if we're going as is with nothing or if we want to uh, include that condition. I would include that condition. I would include that condition, yeah. All right. Okay, so, so the motion then will include that condition as well as the second. Yes, Lindy did second. Yep, mm -hmm. okay. Um, any further questions, comments, discussion? I guess my only question to the board would be, um, I understand his the, the vacant landowner, um, his point. I understand where he's talking about uh, green space and air space. Um, so, but I guess I look at the standpoint that he's only being or using a nine in, <coughs> a nine foot driveway, so it's it's not like he's going the full, you know, eleven and a half mm -hmm. feet. So it will give a little bit. Um, it's just it's it's a sad decision to have to make for three oh. inches. It really is. It's a very sad decision to have to do. Any further discussion? 
Okay, so we have the motion with the amended language. When he's improving and a his second. property, it's yeah. sad because he's he's trying to make the neighborhood better and and improve his driveway and improve his property right. and it's just. It's okay. very sad. Okay, yeah. so all in favor of the motion? Aye. Should we call it, should I do a I roll think, call? I think we should do okay. a roll call. Um, Don Gerber? Aye. Ed Surick? Aye. Keely Johnson? Uh, undecided. Um, we'll come back to Keely. Don Svitan? Yes, I Richard Lindy? Kevin Sampson, Chair votes aye. And Keeley Johnson. I deny. Keeley denied. Motion passed. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. This, the, the motion was approved. This is your. The, uh, the uh, variance was approved with the condition that are approximately 10 feet north of the uh, uh, northwest corner of the home that the driveway starts to veer at that point and then hits the three feet from that point on. So that's what the decision is made and we are moving on to the next item. And sir, if you'd like to call me tomorrow, we can certainly speak more. Yeah, if you want to go downstairs um, at this point in time, uh, it's the building inspection office. Just ask for Steve Sokolowski's card and they'll give you that. Thank you. All right. Okay, moving on to the next item. We have 3.4 variance application by Alejandro Alvarez requesting to build a six foot high fence within their required street yard at 2304 South 9th Street. Mr. Alvarez. Oh. Okay. Ma'am, could you come up to the uh, microphone, please, and speak and let us know, uh, pull it down, and then um, let us know what you're after and why you're making the request that you're after. Well, a six-foot fence, we have a four-foot, but it's open all the way, and we just want to close it to be able to have some privacy. Oh, okay. it's a side yard. Don, you have to, Don, you have to press the button, please. <laughs> right now, you just want to replace it with a six foot fence? Yes, that's all I want to do. But it's on the side yard. So the, the issue here is the tip one that we've run into on a number of occasions where a person has a corner lot looking for some additional privacy. The concern ends up usually being the style of fence because it's being put right in the street yard. Right now you can see the picket fence that was there. That's code compliant and 50% open. This is what they want to do. Um, which is not, it is close, but it, often our discussion is the board on board or vinyl fences along street frontages from the standpoint of how visible they are. So that's oftentimes been the concern we've had are the aesthetics in terms of what those fences eventually look like. I'm not saying that these uh, uh, citizens would want to have their things looking uh, uh, weathered and tired, but oftentimes that what's, that's what we see throughout the city anytime we deal with these street fences and that's why the board has often went with the shadow box design or the vinyl. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I think the next, the next question would be, is there anybody here that's neighbors that want to speak on this item? No. <laughs> no, okay. And um, I know all the neighbors except the new one. Sure. But the, the well, I guess in, in the past, what we suggest for homeowners when they are on a corner is to put, if you're gonna use a wood type of material, it needs to be a box, so you're able to kind of see through it, not go all the way through the fence. Okay, I think the neighbor, isn't the neighbor, you were talking about that, because you were there last night. We, I'm sorry, Jeff, who are you pointing? Could you? Yeah, okay. him. Jeff. Can you hit your speaker? Not you. 
Him. Don. Oh, Don. 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 Yeah. Well, they, they, she, there's a fence on the south lot line. Half of it is a shadow box and half of it is this. Okay. So it's a shadow box type so all, fence. All we require is, that is to be put in. Existing fences or okay. just replacing it with this. That's all. Or the other option is a vinyl fence. What's a vinyl? I don't know um, nothing. So it's a material that um, I guess is very low maintenance, always needs to be clean. You know, it can be cleaned very easily with just water or pressure washed okay. if it does never, get dirty. It's, a, uh, it's more of the white fence mm -hmm. when you see out it's their plastic. Next, it's probably across the street. They have that. A vinyl fence. Yeah. I so think. we require those two types of fences okay. that you can select and the... Um, the building department would be able to instruct you as to what they look like or what type of fence. Well, I'm fencing pretty sure my are. husband knows, but yeah. But what you <laughs> selected and showed to... us a picture of what you would put up is not what we would allow. So this is the type of fencing that we would accept. Okay, and that's a vinyl. It's a vinyl that's fence, mm -hmm. and you it's... can select colors. You're not limited to just having white, white or off Thank white. You. <laughs> you could select a color. Um, but that is the type of other material that we will allow. So either a shadow box or that type of material. Shadow box or? Or a vinyl. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got it done. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Well, uh, the only other comment is they their uh, uh, garage comes off of um, yes. uh, Grand Avenue. And I do believe in their uh, survey, they're showing that they're doing a little site triangle like along they would. the driveway. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, so that we want to just make sure is included, and that's what's yes. being proposed. So, if we, if the board what's was to approve this, this, we'd want to uh, make sure, from a that's design exactly. perspective or a condition perspective, that it's either a shadow box or vinyl. If you want to specify one of those, what's or both. on this corner? Um, that so, is a picture of the uh, house. Oh, uh, so okay. So it's, it's in the, about the middle of the house. yard. So, um, could we do dog ear thing or no? Uh, I don't know. No. If no dog not, ear? Not what we're talking about. It's either going to be shadow box or vinyl. Okay. And if they Those approve that, good. it's going to be a really important that you talk to the building inspector to know specifically what it is you're okay. after so you're not like purchasing said, or I'm, installing I the wrong one. Nothing. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, based on using those uh, two types of materials that building inspection yeah. will instruct you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, okay. Quite a few. We got a quite I'll a few. Second. Okay. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? I call the question. No. <laughs> all right. Donna's called the question. All right. Do I? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion's been passed. <laughs> Just talk to our friends at you know down in the so, in the city to make sure we get the right kind of fencing. Okay, just when you go do down it. to building inspection. Yeah. So That's then correct. Then You'll deal with Pat Irick and building, building inspection. Tell that. your husband you did it, you got it. Tell him to get the building yes. inspection and get your permits for your fence. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Okay, next item, 3.5. We have a variance application by Michael Hemeister requesting to replace part of his existing driveway, which is closer than three feet to the property line, which is allowed, and extend the driveway and a, an additional nine feet, which would also be closer than three feet to the property line at 2503 North 8th Street. And we have Mr. Hammeister up here right now. That's what the problem I have right now is I try replacing existing, about a third of my existing driveway the person that put it in, oh, what, 2003, supposed to pitch it away from the house. Well, it comes toward the house, and it, the foundation does leak as a result of that. So I want to correct that problem. As far as the extension is concerned, when I did pour that driveway 15, 20 years ago, I had a parking pad put a, a alongside the garage not quite long enough i regretted that shortly after i put that in and i i seeing as i have the opportunity i figured i would actually put it in and be much much more useful it would fit in with the yard better than what it is right now and give me ample space to park what i need to park there 
Would the driveway take up more than 50% of your yard, meaning no. grass? No. No. There's from the end of the driveway to the, the, the lot itself is 180 feet deep. From the end of the driveway to the, of where the driveway will end with the extension to the very back of the yard, that would be an additional 75 feet. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Your neighbor doesn't object to that? Nope. Because you're, you're really tight there. <coughs> it is tight there. I have a 40-foot lot line. That's why I you have You want to do it on the south side. Is that what I'm understanding? Pardon me? You want to put the cement on the south side of your house? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it, he has no problem with it. It's just an extension from the driveway that's there right now, actually. It, well, other than the fact that I'm taking out part of that driveway and replacing it again, but uh, and it'll be concrete, it's not going to go correct. any closer to his lot than what we already it are. And it is concrete? Yes. Okay. Steve, any issues from the city standpoint? Uh, there was not an objection or the staff was fine, okay with it. Make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? A second. Okay, so we have a motion to approve and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion Thank passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're off the bat, coming next. All right, uh, item number 3.6, variance application by Timothy and Deborah Davis requesting to build a roof over their porch on the front of their house. A covered porch is not allowed within the required front yards at 3723 South 16th Street. Mr. and Mrs. Davis. You can, you're both more than welcome to come on up, sure. Um, yes, we want to put a gable up. Um, we had a stoop and the, uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it, the um, soffit sure. only covers half of it. Okay. And we want to extend it out to the stoop, no farther than what the stoop originally was. So that's the front of the house that you see before you, everybody right now on the screens. And then... Mr. and Mrs. Davis, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. And then this is the section that they're looking at to extend Add. the bre uh, a pat a uh, small sidewalk patio over here, mm -hmm. as well as the gable. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I believe okay. there are some neighbors here as well for this one. Yep. Okay. Please, if you have any questions or objections, please feel free to come on up. We got everybody to sign in, right? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. My name is Carol Vitella Van Sluice. I'm in the house just north of them. Um, I received this correspondence saying that it was not allowed. Um, and I'm a bit confused because <laughs> I bought the house um, in 2014 and it has a covered porch probably the same size, I haven't measured, but probably the same size as what they are talking about. Um, I just want to say that I have lived in a lot of different states, had a lot of different homes, had a lot of different neighbors, some that I would not <laughs> want to have as the neighbors again. They are fantastic neighbors. They keep their yard ship shape. And I mean, if you look on there, you can see our house has that one right there, yes has oh, yeah, um, she does have a porch. I don't know I haven't seen any plans I haven't talked to them um, but if it's anything similar and I'm sure the city wouldn't let them sure. put in a dump I don't know why um, am I out of variance then I mean I bought the house in 214 that had the covered porch oh, and I'm assuming that no, you you are um, as as is. Your house is okay. Um, typically, there's a, a minimum of a 15 foot setback requirement in order to cover a porch, and they're inside that. So that's why they're here requesting that today. Your okay. home was constructed. Who knows 
you know, I don't know, 50s, you know, a while right. ago, and it had that in there. So you're, there's no issues whatsoever. We typically, anytime there's a variance, send notice to property owners to be aware, hey, this, the neighbors next door are looking for something so that you have the opportunity to participate and learn more about it okay. and speak for or against it or uh, uh, not to object at all, but that was the reason. So there's nothing up with your property whatsoever. It's more of the Davises looking to do something similar. Okay. Um, I had absolutely no objections. They're fantastic neighbors, as I say, and they keep their property. Their, their yard probably looks better than our front yard lots of times because they mow it more often. So. We, we, won't keep that, we won't keep that on the record. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Absolutely. and Mrs. David. Oh, there we go. My name is Kimberly Burroughs. That's my mom. I live with her. <laughs> um, I, I have seen no objection either to them putting a covering over their porch. They have a very beautiful home. And um, there are other houses in surrounding areas that look way worse than what's, what's already existing. And I think it would add um, curb appeal. Mm -hmm. I think it would make the other homes look well, uh, look good as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, um, something to add to make the neighborhood look nice. It's not something that they're um, trying to do to uh, devalue the homes in sure. the neighborhood. It's, it's something that they're trying to improve and, and for their family, um, make it enjoyable for when they have grandkids over and their children over that they can sit out under a covered porch. It's just a covered porch. Sure. You know, I don't believe it's something that is um, extreme sure. out of out of the box that they're asking for. And I, I like my mom said, they are awesome people and, and th th they deserve, they've worked hard and they deserve to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see neighbor support. We appreciate that. Yeah, right. Uh, do we have any? I'd like any to make questions? a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Last item. You would just go to building inspection then probably. I just want to make sure that my name is spelled correctly, my first name. I, I told you yep. of that, and I'm sure I spelled it correctly on the I'm sure it is. All right. Sounds good. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, That's anything else? That's it. Mention, uh, when I talked with the people downstairs as far as the, uh, easements and so on. Now I'm under the under understanding that patios don't necessarily need an easement, but I want to verify that and get it approved if on the north side of my house, I have a section of patio that I want to replace. It's existing concrete right now, but it okay. had floated a bit. So I want to replace it, but that is also right up to the property line. So You'll have to speak to Jeff Lutsky on that, uh, our building inspector, and he can speak to you on that. Okay, I did I did uh, include pictures of that too when I uh, asked for the variance, or easement rather. Uh, Jeff, do you uh, want to address that? Because that was not part of the request. Yes, it was. It should have been, I guess. Is what, because I did send you pictures of that, of the uh, patio section as well. Okay, so pictures, but was it written in the request for the patio? Turning existing gravel driveway into cement driveway. Oh, no, 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 not that one. Not that one. We spoke a lot about that one. <laughs> um, this was, uh, three, 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 let's three. see, replace part of existing driveway and extend it nine feet, replace patio, Concrete. Does say replace patio 
concrete. So what are we talking about? I guess uh, we should revisit. Pardon me? Glad you came back. Yeah, that was <laughs> I am too. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so apologize. that patio is this other, uh, would you be able to bring the, yeah, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong one. Thank you. This right here, are you referring to this section up here? Yes. And that's existing already? That is already existing and is concrete. It's just that it's- Do you have a photo of that one in here? Uh, I did send you photos. I just uh, didn't know if you knew offhand. Is that in this behind? That, that there section is the back of the driveway area where, that, so it, that, uh, see if I can right there. You can see how see. it's set see, where where the green lettering is in the yep. upper. Yeah, this is it says save that part of the concrete. I'm going to be leaving there. There's it says save right at the bottom and also uh, toward the top of the picture in green letters. It you can say it's A V E right. That that concrete is going to stay there. Where it has the R, that's going to be removed. The next piece will be removed. And then there's a section that's between that save section and the mm -hmm. deck itself that would be coming out. And it would be re-poured, same size. It's just that it would be poured. So it would, when I poured that 30 years ago, and that part of it, Unfortunately, I didn't know how to pin it to the old concrete, so it floated away from the existing concrete. It created quite a bump that is actually quite hazardous as far as walking is concerned. Uh, so I want to take those out, have it put yeah. in properly yeah. so it stays put, and it's... Who made the motion okay. Very Rachel? good. Was it oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. So we, we have two things with this. One, patios don't require a building permit, which that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is that existing concrete that's closer than three feet to a property line can be replaced as is, where is, without a variance. Gotcha. Okay. That's our ordinance. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Or whoever made the motion could just add it. Wouldn't to be that required. It would be approved, yeah. Okay. Because I don't think anybody would object. I don't think so. To. Uh, to having you replace So we're that. good either way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. Glad you did. Thank you. We're glad you did. Okay. Thanks Thank you much. All right. Do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Any second? All in favor to adjourn? Second. Opposed? Second. First. Second. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Uh, that was the first one. To yeah. get <laughs> good job, man. Thank you so much. That was much. a good first one to start that off. Yeah.